Hey guys, I just want to welcome you back to Aaron's Automotive. And uh, today's video is actually another camper video. As you can see behind me, I'm sitting inside the camper. Today, we'll be going through and installing a Campco Hybrid Heat. Now, what this does is this allows you to run your, your travel trailer's water heater off of electric. If you don't have that option already, this makes a wonderful upgrade and modification to do to your travel trailer. When you're hooked up to shore power, you can heat your, your, your water through, you know, through the, the electrical hookups instead of wasting your propane. So we're going to go through this box. We're going to install it into this, uh, into this travel trailer. Mine's an 86 Prowler by Fleetwood. And uh, this is a 10 gallon model uh, water heater conversion. I only have a 6 gallon water heater in mine. So first we're going to make sure that this anode actually fits in the water heater. From my research, I believe it should. Excuse me. But the only reason I went with the 10 gallon is they didn't have the 6 gallon option available. I had purchased this off Amazon. I'll uh, put the link down in the description for this below. If I can find the 6 gallon one, I'll put that down below as well. But uh, from what I understand, the heating rods are actually the same length, just made for different wattages. This one is rated for... I think it was 600 watts where the six gallon uh, anode was only 400 watts so I figured more power quicker heat recovery so we're gonna go through this box I've already opened it up just to make it easier to take out of the packaging and what you're gonna get in here is your 110 volt power cord I believe this is a four foot cable so you'll more than likely have to find an outlet that this will reach to or run your new run yourself a new uh, outlet from your breaker panel using some Romex and some uh, an ele uh, electrical box and plug and all that uh, I've got a different idea of how I'm going to power up my water heater using this so we'll get to that during the install so we got the power cord uh, Another cable, not sure what it goes to yet. I really haven't even read the instructions. Uh, got the electric anode rod here, and this states it is six hundred and twenty five watts. We have our thermostat, which this needs to actually be connected to the water heater itself so from my understanding you'll have to trim the styrofoam insulation around your water heater and it'll be held in with double-sided sticky tape the water heater ranges thermostat must be mounted to tank awesome uh, heat ranges from 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 150 or 32 Celsius to 66 Celsius that'll focus The cover I believe to the water heater a thermostat that just kind of keeps the wires protected from shorting out on anything still access the reset switch we have the on off toggle switch mounting bracket mounting screws and rubber grommet and I believe that rubber grommet is actually going to be needed for this guy because we're gonna have to drill a hole through the panel of our water heater not through the water heater just a panel on the water heater we've got some threaded fittings I believe this fits suburban and Atwood water heaters so I just have to find out which one fits your water heater the best and a compression fitting some uh, um, flex tape, no, Teflon tape, <laughs> uh, zip tie, and a couple of more electrical wires. 
Now as for hookup, it is very simple. Let's get that out of the way. Basically just follow the instructions that are on the sheet, which is very simple. Whoa. So I'll end up going through these step by step as I install. I'm going to give these a quick read over. We're going to jump on out to the water heater and we're going to get started on there. All right, so we're going to be heading out to the uh, to the water heater. And first thing we need to do is to make sure that our water pump is turned off. Step outside. And we need to make sure, according to the instructions, that our gas supply is off. That's off and that's off. And then come over to our water heater and we need to remove that drain plug there. So the reason I'm doing this is not because of propane usage. I don't mind using my propane at all. What my big issue is is the pilot light doesn't stay lit. Oh, big bumblebee. And uh, it needs a whole new pilot light assembly and honestly this hybrid heat was cheaper than a, than a pilot light assembly. Alright, so we need to drain the water heater so we grab ourselves a socket and a ratchet. Mine happens to be a 22 or 7 8. Fit it in there. Crack it loose. Now I'm going to put you guys down because this is going to get messy. There we go. I'm just going to let that drain for a bit. And as you can see, my water heater doesn't seem to have had an uh, anode rod in it. Alright, so with that... Uh, water heater drain. We're going to take our hardware kit. We're going to assemble it and find out which plug fitting fits our water heater. I have a feeling it's going to be this guy. The, the sh smaller one of the two. And a Dez. So I'm going to wrap some Teflon tape around these and be right back. Alright, so I'm back, got Teflon tape on that fitting, and Teflon tape on the smaller guy. I'm going to thread those in. Now keep in mind, these don't need to be crazy tight. These threads are what's called NPT, or National Pipe Thread. So they're actually tapered threads. So this fitting isn't actually going to go in all the way. And that's why you need the Teflon tape. All right, that is snug anymore, and actually I risk breaking it. So now what we need to do is we need to grab our uh, compression fitting part, which is a little copper or brass ring. That slips over the anode rod and the actual compression nut. So I'm gonna untwist these wires for the heating element. There, now I'm going to fit our, sorry, our uh, nut down first and then our compression ring. And I'm going to slide that on in to the water heater. I'm going to 
hold this up here with this. I'm gonna go get a wrench that's gonna fit that. We'll be right back. All right, so I've got the uh, a wrench, put that in there. And uh, it's a 5 8 or a 16. That'll tighten down your compression nut. place. As long as it doesn't leak when we test it out, I'll be good. I think that's going to be good there. So I got to get some water in this tank and then we're going to Turn on the water pump and check for leaks now. I don't have any water in my holding tank, so we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so I filled my tank about half full. Turn on my water pump. It's gonna start pushing water into the tank. And I'm just gonna pop a seat here for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna let this fill up and I'm gonna look for leaks. All right, so the tank's filled. I did have a very small leak under here. Just had to tighten up, uh, not the compression fitting, but the middle fitting, just a couple of more turns. So now what we need to do is to tuck our wiring in through the chassis or the casing or whatever, in behind the water heater and get in there and start the rest of our uh, our install. So I'm gonna tuck these in there, we'll see you inside. All right, so inside the water heater, we need to mount our thermostat. So there's the, the water heater, I'm just kind of in the cupboard beside it. And you guys fell. Try and prop you back up. So basically, the thermostat, I'm thinking, Somewhere along here, not sure quite where yet. I'm thinking anywhere that I can get a flat surface on. Actually, I'm thinking the back side of the water heater is going to be my best bet. So I'm going to just take a knife. You see where I'm going? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to kind of mark out where I want it to be, roughly. And I'm just going to start carving off that styrofoam. And that should work there. Now my electrical that I brought in should be in here, and it is, and it should reach. And so now, I'm just gotta stick on the water heater, or a thermostat. Now I'm changing the temperature before I put it on, somewhere to around 130 uh, uh, degrees. Hundred thirty, hundred forty ish. Double check that it fits in my slot. Mm. Might have to do a little bit more trimming, possibly. Oh, I think that should fit there. Yeah, that'll fit there. Peel off the other side to the double-sided sticky tape. And on it goes. No turning back now. Ah, 
Oh yeah, that's pretty well on there. Now I'm just gonna go get the electrical wire, and we'll be right back. All right, so you guys ended up missing a couple of steps, and I apologize for that. My camera had died, and I uh, I didn't actually notice until after I had the electrical hooked up. So, anyways, it's actually very simple. The the two wires that came in from from the heating element, they're color coded black tip and white tip. From there, you run one of the blue wires from the uh, thermostat to the one of the red wires on the um, heating element. One of the black wires, or the black wire coming off, actually goes into the power source. From the power source, your switch actually runs out. I have mine mounted over here, and to your plug. Whew. I'm out of breath. I'm out of shape. Anyways, a lot of people would put a plug in somewhere there. I decided to do something a little differently. See, my RV is only 30 amps. This thing is a 625 watt heater. So, what is that? Roughly 6 amps or so? I mean, I don't want to tax my 30 amp system if I don't have to. So what I can do, so when I'm at an RV park and I'm hooked up to 30 amp, I can run an extension cord like what I've kind of got set up right now out this cubby to the pedestal into the 15 amp receptacle there. So essentially the water heater would be on its own circuit. Um, from there I could actually even run it into a, a a power strip, power that off from in here when I don't want power running to it. Um, if I only have 30 amp hookup, it's also as easy as running the extension cord out the cubby to my outside outlet. As I said, my power switch is right here under this little cupboard. Open it up, turn it on. So my tank is full of water. So in theory, I should be ready to turn the heater on. I'm gonna go power up my water pump again. I'm going to double check I have no air in the system. I'm good. Now I can power this up and use my multimeter with a no contact voltage test and I can test for power. So the extension cord is live. I've got nothing coming to my thermostat yet. I have power coming to my switch. Turn it on. I should have power coming up my switch. I should have power on that blue line. Why don't I have power on that blue line? Hmm. I'm going to do some diagnostics quickly. Hold on. Alright, so I found out getting power to there right now. And now I'm not. Now I am. Now I'm not. I found out this cover makes contact just enough kill the switch. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different spot for that. Probably just rotate it sideways so we'll be back. Alright, as easy as that. And I just move the thermostat or not the thermostat, the uh, the power switch elsewhere. Now I'm getting power. So I'm also gonna go to my amps setting. I'm gonna go 20 amps AC Turn on my light and see what this bad boy's drawing. 4.9, almost 5 amps of. Oh, let's clamp that right. 4.87, 4.9. So, almost 5 amps of power. I mean, 
in the grand scheme of things, that's a fair bit when you've got a 30 amp receptacle or 30 amp power. So you're going to run to the outside of the trailer now. We're going to take a look at the uh, heating element there. All right, so before we step outside, I just want to see you guys to see the time. It is 2.30 in the afternoon. I just turned that water heater on. We're also going to kind of take some time and see how long it takes to heat up. From what I heard, it should be about an hour. So we're going to go back to our voltage test. And I have voltage there. Hey, buddy. Hi. How's it going? Good. Say hi. 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 We have baby strawberries. We have baby strawberries? They're starting to grow? Awesome. All right, so I'm going to go back to my 20 amps AC current test. Clamp around here. And maybe I just got to clamp around the one. There we go, so 4.88 amps of current, 4.95. So like I said, almost five amps of current. I don't think this piece gets hot. I think it gets hot further in. Yeah, so this won't get hot. I think the heating element's actually near the tip. So it shouldn't burn that. Should be able to close the water heater cover. And everything is locked away, so we will come back in about an hour and check on the uh, the water's temperature. Oh. Say see ya! See ya! Alright, so we're back. It is almost 4 o'clock, so we'll call it an hour and a half. The thermostat's set for 125. One twenty. Water pumps on. Let's uh, run some water. It's definitely hot water. Thirty-five. It seems to be almost a ten degree difference between the thermostat and the water heater. And I did. I had it actually cranked up to one hundred and forty-five, but I ended up tripping my pressure relief valve here, which is set for two hundred and ten. But it must have tripped because I had uh, water coming out of here. So I don't know if maybe the gasket's bad inside of there and it's just leaking. This is the first time I've really had my water heater valves turned on. So I'm going to have to buy another one of those and uh, go from there. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I mean obviously it's heated up. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop me a thumbs up. Catch you in the next video. Bye.